Okay, I think we're live. Did Twitch just cut the stream that I'd started? Anyways, welcome to Sundays at the Tea House, our new weekly stream on Sundays, in addition to our Tea Tasting Tuesday on Tuesdays. Um, different day, same time, a little bit of a different theme, but uh, we'll get into that step by step, zip by zip, in an ever so relaxed way. Let me join you on the listening to the music because then um, I can also be relaxed. And um, let me show you the tea of tonight already. While well, we're waiting for a few more people to join, I think the Twitch cutting us off may have kicked out people again. Okay, we can go back. Bit below, just a little bit. So, there's a cup there. How about we put a tea there? So, tonight's tea, because it's already 8 o'clock here in Germany, which it's always going to be on a Sunday evening <laughs> from now on. But I thought after having so much tea this this week and streaming quite a lot, a bit excessively, one might say, to to to, to get our feet wet again. Um, we had a lot of Anji Bai Cha on, what was it, Wednesday. We had for tea tasting Tuesday, we had... I remember we had Korean black tea at some point this week. But I think that was... No, that was Tuesday. Korean black tea on Tuesday, Anji Bai Cha on Wednesday. And Thursday was... Korean black tea on Wednesday. Uh, Korean black tea on Thursday. Anji Bai Cha on Wednesday. Friday was the yellow um, yellow jade ring tea. Yesterday we took a break. And today we're back with, surprise, surprise, a Chu Puar tea, which is something we here at home drink a lot in the evenings when it's not yet time for herbal tisanes, so chamomile and um, what do I usually drink? Well, it's come all the time. I drink... I can't even remember right now what I usually drink. Um, so we've got various blends, really, of tisanes. Um, minimalistic blends, I might say. And I, yeah, I usually like things like pine, peppermint, licorice. I love licorice. So anything like that, which or sometimes I even opt for a caramel myself. But today it's going to be chupuar, so a fermented tea, in this case from China, which is also where puar originates, at least I should say the dark tea that puar is, the fermented tea that uh, the category is actually called Pecha um, and Pu'ar is part of that category and Pu'ar is the probably most well known at least here in the Western world originates from the city of Pu'ar in Yunnan in China so basically the name is also the name of the place where it's from I'm going to unpack this already a little bit so we can get excited a bit more and I'll just prepare a few things here. The water is already at 90 degrees, so the kettle doesn't have to make too much noise. But I'll bring it up to to a boil now, because um, Puar is the one, or Hecha in general, is the one tea where you really always want to go with temperatures at the 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. Because first off, it's um, sometimes stored after after fermenting, after processing, which is more so the case of the tradition called the raw puar, the shang puar, which 
is not fermented um, in this one, one could say in this. Oops, let me turn off the kettle there. It's very loud. <laughs> That's a very loud kettle. Um, which is not fermented in this accelerated way that Shupuar is. We're going to talk about that a bit later down the stream. And but it ages over time. By over time, meaning decades. So usually, whether it's a Shupuar or Shangpuar, I always go with a double rinse. So really washing the tea leaves in this case, um, and then also always with 100 degrees. Not only because that makes it a safe beverage, but also because the the depth uh, and the, the, the aroma that's in there, you really want to force that out with really high temperatures. Whereas with other teas, you know, green teas, most specifically, we go with much lower temperatures because the high temperatures will just overwhelm and frankly destroy the finer notes. Okay, stream is running. Got a panic there for a moment. Okay, closed captions working. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, so it's it's still a bit early for those joining from the UK. I know it's only seven o'clock for you. So we'll just get started with the drinking of the tea. And um, then as people join us, we can talk a bit more about what this actually is. For now, maybe I'll just mute myself so I don't give away everything already um, and bring up the music a bit more. So relax, sit back and enjoy the the scenery here of the tea making. If you've got any questions or just want to say hi, feel free to bring me back. You're wondering this is just to warm up the cups and the, the teapot a little bit. seconds and then increase by five seconds for each following infusion. Thank you. 
It is so refreshing, I just said. It's a really good tea. <clears throat> it's not something I would want to start my days with. Because it has a lot of that earthiness and, and some mineral notes. But at the same time, for a Sunday evening at the tea house, it's perfect. Really. There, I said really instead of to be honest. That's progress. Thank you so much for the support. If you're there and you want to say hi, please do so in chat. And there he is, Sir Kelsey. Hey, how's it going? Hello. We're having tea. Are you having tea as well? Welcome to the stream. I think it's your 
Is it your first time here? I'm not even sure. Anyway, I'll raise my... I'll raise my cup of shupuar to you saying hi here. And you redeemed show the tea. That's been a while. Let's show you the tea. So for that, I'm going to go s switch back to the tea camera, of course. First time in a in, first time in a tea stream ever. I hope you're going to enjoy the experience. There you go. So this is the tea in its infused form already. Um, I could maybe I'll do that later towards the stream. Um, I'll share again the dry tea leaves, which are really... You know what? I'm gonna go down and grab that real quick because the... Ah, I did not come prepared, but maybe you've seen a Shupu R. This is just a tiny one. Like it was this size here. This is the wrapping paper. Let me go and grab that real quick so I can show you the... the dry ones. Be right back. Okay, and I even left the microphone on. How's that for professional streamers? Um, yeah, mine are from a different tea store. Actually, I buy them at my um, friends here around the corner. Got some new ones. Um, but you can check if it's the same that you've got. This is from spring 2018. Here it is. <laughs> and I just love these. I usually... No, I don't want to even say usually. I also drink quite a bit Shang Puar, so the raw Puar. Um, and we have a... A big... Oh! <laughs> I can show you because it's right behind me. <laughs> so we've got a big cake that we got last year for our anniversary. This one here, we call it our anniversary tea. And this one is really, you can see if I open this. So this is Shu, so this, uh, sorry, this is Shang, so this is raw. But it's been stored in Hong Kong for a while before I bought it in Düsseldorf, or we bought it in Düsseldorf last year. So let me take this camera because it's better. You can see this is also already dark. But you can tell it's still aging and it's... It was originally a raw cake that then aged over the years or decades, I should say, because this is really from 2007. I don't want to lie. I uh, have to check again. It's from 2007, I think. Yeah. So this is an, an, a properly aged tea, whereas the one that we're... Oh, that's not beautiful. I have to fix that later. Whereas... Um, the one that we're having here tonight is a Shupuar. So this one's kind of, you could call, accelerated, like a beschleunigter methode. So with actual fermentation, so bacteria and yeast get added to the tea leaves when they're still wet and then uh, the tea gets piled. And that kind of speeds up the, the aging process that a, a raw puar would go through over the, the years and decades, actually over the decades. So until it gets this dark, it usually takes 10, 15, 20 years maybe. And with this one, with this technique, it can be um, accelerated to happen within months. So, and from there you can guess already, this is a method that got introduced in the tea industry when there was a super high demand in, in um, aged teas. So they figured out a way how to speed up the aging process. So it's actually quite fascinating. Um, and I like both. Um, I think for the raw, the Shang Puar, I like the ones that are kind of medium aged. The very young ones, they just, they overwhelm me a little bit because they get me really jittery. They give me the jitters. But the, the medium aged ones for me are probably the sweet spot, like the one, one we have here that's roughly 15 years old. 
and um, and then the the shupuar, the the fermented one, it's something I drink every now and then in the evenings. Really, it's nice to go with food if you like, whether you're vegetarian or not. If you like food that's very rich and fat, this is really cool with it. Yeah. So here's to here's to tea. And it's more complex than you'd think. I always joke about this in my in my tea workshops. I tell people, well, and because we usually have this one towards the end of the tea seminar, and I always get people a little bit anxious in the in the beginning, and I tell them, oh, and towards the end of the the stream, towards the end of the seminar, we're going to try who are tea, and then everybody's like, oh, what's it going to be like? I never had that, and I say, yeah, it's a little bit as if you were to bite into into damp soil in the forest or something, you know, but because it has a little bit of that um, dampness, that earthiness that you that you find. Think a walk in the forest and and you turn around a stone or, or like a, a, a piece of moss, a piece of wet, wet wood. By the way, I have some wood here. So if we um, from my childhood forest, by the way, um, I digress. So th that's basically also the ideas that you get that you're most likely to get if you um, try a shupuar with a lot of diversity and variety. So that's basically just a generalization. And then I always also get, or people say they always also get a little bit of licorice notes. So if you like licorice, Süßholz, Wurzel, Lakritz, um, a nice shupuar is something I'd recommend you try. Small delay, oops. Um, okay, but I hope the the camera and the microphone should be in sync, right? It's probably just the delay. Yeah, so that was your question about the taste. I guess that's what you meant. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's what it tastes like. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm not a tea sommelier. Um, I'm not going to go on a rant now about how in different, there's different ways how to get a tea sommelier and then some of them really give expert knowledge and some of them give you a certificate after two days of drinking tea. And um, I'm not a tea sommelier, so not a tea taster of any, any kind. I, I like the experience of years and decades of really tasting tea, judging tea, deciding uh, which of these 30 samples is the one we want to buy. It's something I'm used to doing from, from my former um, endeavors with, with uh, paper and tea and also Tim Yal, where I was responsible for creating the, the tea assortment. But um, creating a tea assortment of, of, of 10, 20, 30 teas or even creating a, a tea menu for a restaurant or for a hotel is, which is also something that I do, is a different beast than being in charge of deciding every year, every season, every harvest season for 200, 300, 400, 500 different teas, um, which batch to buy from which farmer that year. And for that, for each of those hundreds of teas, you get tens of samples and then you have to taste them next to each other. That's a different, that's a different skill. And with that comes obviously also the experience of being able to really identify and then put into words and describe what you actually taste and um, the aroma notes that you detect and the fragrance. I'm not the best at that, really. My former mentor, my first, my first tea teacher, if you will, where I worked in the tea store in, in 2010, for, for a year and, or one and a half. He was so good at it. You could hand him any tea, for example, a green tea from, or a white tea from, from Nepal. Um, and then he'd be like, oh yeah, this is, I'm making things up now more or less. This is 10% green beans, uh, a little bit of rice, a uh, little bit of this or that flour. And so he, he will really be that specific and then you, dry the tea 
and you'd exactly get what he just described. And I cannot do that. I can go with like basic vocabulary, like earthy notes, mineral, flowery, <clears throat> fruity, and then every now and then it hits me and I get very specific ones like peach, apricot, lemon, um, or even something specific. It reminds me of a, a, um, a beverage or a food that I like, um, which in my opinion is something that, that um, really helps. Just allow yourself to t think in terms of foods, your favorite foods and beverages, because tasting tea, unless it's like in a professional setting to, to, to decide which teas to buy for a business, um, I think tasting tea is can be much more fun, at least for me. There's people who do it, who like to do it very strict and, and uh, uh, following other rules. But for me, it's a lot of fun when I try to combine it with memories, very much like a fragrance, you know, um, with with uh, moments that it reminds me of and that I or that I associate it with really. You know, what time of the day do I drink it with? <coughs> Yeah, the chat is delayed. Um, we like two weeks ago when we first started streaming here again, I streamed from the Twitch mobile app and there's almost zero delay. That is so cool. But then we can't have music. We can't have the overlays. We can't have chat. Then. Do I see tea? Tea time with Francis. Welcome my, shall I say, new friend to uh, Thomas Talks Tea here on Sunday for Sundays at the Tea House, which is today our premiere of the new weekly stream, Knockwood. <laughs> Um, we're talking about this Shupu R here that we're having. I was nerding out a little bit with uh, our friend Kelsey here, Sir Kelsey, about the difference between Shang and Shu and the um, fermentation to accelerate the aging process versus the natural aging of a, um, a Shang Pu R. I've got one here behind me that I can get out again if anyone's interested. And um, yeah, now we were talking about tasting stuff and I've got an aroma wheel here which is originally from wine tasting not sure if you can read this so this is something we also use <laughs> thank you no please go ahead go ahead <laughs> tell me more tell me more friends <laughs> I can take it um uh, thank you, I appreciate the, the feedback. So, um, ah, blushing. <laughs> so this aroma wheel is really something useful because you can start from, so in the center of it, you have basically, um, well, it says tea flavor wheel. And then it starts further to the outside. We have roasted, herbal, green note, citrus, light floral, intense floral, fruity. So that's what you'd usually, unless you I immediately have an idea of, this reminds me of mango or um, cucumber or water spinach. I'm reading what's on here, by the way. Um, I'm not sure what water spinach would taste like, to be honest. Um, so unless you I immediately, something hits you like that, something very specific, then um, you'd start with something more generalized. And then say in this case for this uh, Shupo R here, we'd probably go with, um, yeah, what would we go with actually from this? How useful is this for this tea here? Because I'm looking for... Actually, let's go through the wheel a bit, a bit more before we talk about this tea more. So you can see from there, it goes further outside then. And what we have next, sorry, I can't read it like this. Um, for roasted, we have roast or sugar. For fruity, we have red apple, pineapple, peach, mango, lychee, banana. So that can... a choice of different kinds of fruit there for intense floral we have night blooming um, yada 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 and then it goes further you know for, for herbal we have grass versus herb green notes we have vegetable bean green fruits and then even further mung bean bean sprouts tofu fig guava green apple pear grass jelly mint yada 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 so that's that is helpful um, I usually don't do that unless I really am invited to a group of people who want to sit down and do a, like a, a, a tasting, like really specific tasting like that. I like to just throw stuff like this in the corner and just focus on the tea and zip the tea, slurp the tea to really get it um, past my tasting buds fast and give the the nose um, a lot of air, oxygen to 
uh, detect the the aroma via the so-called retro olfactoric um, um, identification of stuff, which is <laughs> which is um, what really is the most important part. And you know, smelling the tea is more important than tasting it. Sorry, I'll catch up here with chat real quick. We have a delay already, and I'm taking my time. <clears throat> when did you start appreciating tea on such a high level? When did it become such a big part of your life? Very complicated, yeah. Um, so the drinking tea is a science. Well, so um, when did I start? So the story goes, let me read the story. It's story time. We should have a, a story time thing here. So, no, I'm not going to read this to you. So there is a bit of my story I share also on my website. If you want to... Um, let me use this chance to share the links. So there's the link tree. I hope link tree is up again because link tree was down yesterday for those tech nerds among you. But it's back and uh, there's there's all the links you'll need to find my find out about my tea. Authent uh, way in tea. Um, and so usually the 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 myth or the story, the founding. Um, <laughs> Founding myth goes that um, my mother always used to put a huge pot of um, Eastern Frisian herbal tea. By the way, sorry for the crappy webcam here in the main camera. Um, we'll upgrade eventually once the funding is there. So my mother used to put a large pot of Eastern Frisian black tea blend on the table during my childhood already, and I never really liked it. I'd, I tr I th I'm not sure if I was allowed to try, but at some point when I was allowed to try, I, I just didn't like it. It was just for me. It was just bitter and uh, nah. But it grew on me, and at some point I, I really started enjoying it. And then I looked into, started to look into tea further in my late teens, I want to say. But back then, honestly, at a very different level, and um, very much like people start out at least here in, in, in Germany or in the parts of Europe that I know how tea culture or getting into tea kind of works for people most of the time. Um, so with looking into different kinds of tisanes and, and or tea blends, I grew fond of Earl Grey, tea Earl Grey hot, probably due to my obsession with a certain uh, Starfleet captain um, who also is a, an enjoyer of that tea. So that, and that kind of led towards then further exploring tea. And in my early 20s, really only, I think I started to explore tea on, on this kind of level of getting slowly, but surely getting into it. I remember my first, my first specialty teas, if we call them like that, was probably, I'm never sure whether white tea was first or oolong tea was first. <laughs> Yeah, sure. We can we can zoom in on the on the frog, and um, that's that's very easy to do. Is he in focus? I think no. Sorry, uh, little Iro. By the way, goes by they them pronouns. It's all just um, use the name. So this is little Iro, um, our trusted tea pet. There you go. Yeah. So um, back to my monologue real quick. And uh, so I never know whether I started with white teas or oolong teas, but I remember that my first high quality specialty teas were the the usual candidates, right? So for white tea, I remember drinking Bai Mudan and Silver Needle a lot in my early 20s, mid to, early to mid 20s. And then um, oolongs, and I never know exactly what it was back then. Um, I can't can't figure it out anymore, but it must have been like a semi-oxidized one with a heavy roast so kind of a traditional i'd say something like a probably affordable variant of a traditional dung ding oolong from taiwan but i think and i think i had something that was back then called formosa oolong right um yeah so that's kind of what what um my first memories about drinking tea are and then um yeah, and then I got in deeper and it really started with, let's jump a bit ahead in time, 2009 when I moved to Berlin. I 
started working, I kept working in my original profession as a, as a copywriter and a public relations consultant. And in 2011, 10, no, end 2011, I um, needed slash wanted a little side gig, a uh, side job. And I thought like, why not go ask at that tea store that I pass every other day in the evening. So I went there and we sat down over a cup of tea, had a nice chat. And then a week later, I started working there, basically supporting them with uh, marketing, sales communication, but also getting a chance to kind of do an internship of sorts, if you will, with um, packing tea, opening those crates, the crates which back then were more used than nowadays to, um, yes, I'm that old, to um, import tea. Nowadays, everything mostly gets shipped in, in, the, in paper bags because it's less, it's, it's um, more lightweight. But opening those tea, wooden tea crates and um, carrying bags of tea and bags of tea, I mean 20, 30, 40, 50 kilos of tea on my shoulder up the, the shelf. They had huge shelves there because they also did wholesale for other for other um, tea stores and delivering teas to, to um, hotels and restaurants. I will be streaming today for uh, probably until uh, it's almost nine o'clock now. So we'll go another two hours probably. So until 11 hour time. Yeah, so that's that's when I started to learn about tea, how to talk about tea, how to sell tea, how to get people excited about tea by observing. I got the chance to blend tea, um, make my own Earl Grey <laughs> and um, yeah, and sell tea in the store and stuff like that. And in 2012, I was a co-founder of founding partner, I should say, of uh, Paper and Tea, a lifestyle tea brand back then in, in founded in Berlin by uh, the three of us. And um, nowadays, you can probably also find it in, in uh, Vienna and Zurich and uh, Oslo and um, Amsterdam and here in Cologne as well. So there's a lot of new stores now. But uh, yeah, I started that and uh, was responsible for the tea seminars, for the products, especially the tea products. And um, I ran the store. I educated the the, uh, the staff and, and got them up to speed with their tea knowledge, stuff like that. And yeah, that I did for three years then decided to retreat from the business and focus really on, well, basically what I'm again doing today, um, getting people excited about tea via my f back then first iteration of my tea seminars and events in Berlin, which I did for a few years. Until then, um, a international corporate company got me here to the Cologne area, I want to say, to consult them on the development and market introduction of a an automated tea maker which I again did for three years here from Wuppertal near Cologne and that's basically a super fast <laughs> warp jump through my my way in tea if you will it's I don't want to say even dedicated in my life because you know um this channel fun fact this channel used to go by the name of tea games and star stuff and we still have a i still have a youtube channel that is at tea games and star stuff and the discord server is um by the way join us uh, francis join us on discord if you like um, hey setter nine willkommen zum teehaus am sonntag um so francis uh, tea games and star stuff is also the name of the discord server because I don't want to say I dedicated my life to tea, really. It's something I have been consistently, and consistency is something I struggle with. It's also something I do not value all that much, to be honest, because I, I'm much more fond of being passionate and authentically passionate about things. But tea is the one thing that has stuck with me for the past 20, 20 odd years of my life. 20, 25 years of my life in one one way or the other, right? Starting with Roybos vanilla peach <laughs> to what I just mentioned, the white teas, the, the oolong teas, the first ones that I tried and then um, it, iterating from there really. And um, But yeah, I kind of probably at some point got the idea of I want to work with tea. I want to get other people excited about tea and I'm not, not sure if I've ever made it a plan, but things just happened. And, and I just put myself out there and in, in 
in contexts where I was allowed to grow and to, to combine my experience in communication with my passion for tea and then just grow both of them um, parallelly. And now um, I'm, I'm privileged to say that um, after a bit of a break these past few years where I paused and re-evaluated my, my way of working with tea and what kind of projects I still want to do and the ones that maybe don't fulfill me that much on a personal level. Um, I'm going to do the tea thing full time again, actually, which is a bit scary, but it's also super exciting and motivating. So starting 1st of May, officially, I talked about it at great length yesterday on the Discord server. Sorry for spamming you, everybody, but I just wanted to be open about it and, and let you all know what's going to happen. So starting 1st of May, officially, I will um, be a full time tea educator and I want to say business consultant for the tea industry, for tea stores, for tea brands, tea farmers from the origin countries who want to improve their uh, marketing communication here in the European and or German speaking parts of the world. And um, yeah, so that's that's exciting. And as a part of that, I kind of thought, what better time um, to bring back also the Twitch channel under really the focus of tea because 2024 and beyond for me needs to be um, focused on tea again and the games and star stuff. So that's before I digressed. So that's the other things that I kind of want to say that have been with me consistently. So I've always been a tea drinker. I've always been a gamer, probably a gamer longer than I've been a tea drinker. And um, and then just astronomy is something that uh, I mentioned science fiction already, right? So it kind of ties in for me and it's really one thing and it, it, it interacts with each other very naturally. And that's something I want to also um, get people excited about. Don't, unless you really feel like, okay, I want to dedicate my life to only tea and learn tea and do only tea the, this, this proper way. I personally can only recommend do it your own way, integrate it into your daily routine I don't drink tea like this all the time. I also, when I'm lazy, I just grab my cup, I sit there and I grab the gaiwan or I just throw the tea leaves in a glass. We call it grandpa style. It's also a traditional way of drinking tea, by the way. And I just sit there, play Star Citizen and, and drink my tea uh, all the same, right? So. Can I show Iroh in a... Yes, I can show little Iroh because it's little Iroh. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's fine. It's, uh, it's also the name of a... Of our um, one of our bots on Discord, you may have noticed. So, little Iro, let me let me show you a bit more what little Iro can do. So, um, first off, for those who are interested, let's do a little tea pet section here. The I'm going to try and make the autofocus stop. Uh, that's not that doesn't work. Anyway, so little Iro is a tea pet, and for those of you who do not know what a tea pet is, and what a tea pet is about. Um, I'm not too fond of tea pets, actually. <laughs> so the fact that Little Iroh is still around is mostly due to the fact that Little Iroh reminds me of my tea days in Berlin when I was very active within the tea community in Berlin and I did tea events there, tea seminars there and um, in one tea store that I collaborated with for my tea seminar, they sold these uh, tea pads. I had one in a darker green, I want to say forest green, and then one in this, this is really like an ochre brownish thing, right? You can see there's already a lot of patina there from, from the all the tea that Lyra has had. Um, the green one I gave away to a friend at some point, and this one I kept. So the, the things that I'm not too fond of when it comes to tea pets is I'm, I, you know, what I prefer is something like this, <laughs> just a pebble or a stone or what I showed you earlier. I'm going to hold them. I'm going to hold them to the camera in a second. Yeah. So like this is like, this is a, a, a log, a piece of wood from the forest where I, as a child, I used to play and, and at the, at the, in the, the small, um, the small lake, uh, the small lake, the small river that was the, there, and the, climbed the trees, and then just experienced nature. 
And this is something I brought a few years back. I brought back um, from a visit there. So something like that, something from nature really. That's kind of not sculpted specifically and not artificially changed by humans. And so you can get, maybe now get a better idea why I'm not too fond of the concept of a teapad. But it is something that a lot of people are super excited about. And what this one can do, before I show it more close up, is so we always feed it a little bit of tea, right? Usually we either if there's some tea left that we want to discard anyway, we can use that. Um, and then, come on, stay in focus. We're talking about the teapot. And then you can see little Iro likes to drink the tea and he can also spit out the tea again. There you go. And I'm gonna now hold them into the camera here. Okay, there you go, focus time. So this is little Iro from the front and you can see there's a little coin there. And then turn them around. I, I'm, I'm getting ideas why Kelsia wants to, wants me to turn them around because probably being an artist, I suspect we'll have a beautiful drawing of little Iroh popping up on our Discord server very soon. I wouldn't be surprised if Kelsia pulls that off. So if you're like, I can send you links to like teapads like this if you want to get a better view. Yeah. So, little Iro, that's little Iro. But people have collections of tea pets, and this is like just unglazed clay. There's also ones where you, um, if you pour hot water over them, they change the color. So the the glazing, they're glazed then, and the glazing reacts to the, the heat. So from say brown to bright red or something, which is which is fun, which is a fun effect, and maybe at some point I get one. That, yeah. And then there's also really interesting interpretations of tea pets or tea companions, like little babies, and you pour the tea in their mouth, and then it comes out again at the other end, stuff like that. So that's that's a bit too much for me. <laughs> Um, but this this is still fine for me, specifically because I like this kind of clay. Um, I've got a teapot. I've got a teapot here. You can see a unglazed ochre clay teapot. Uh, I always want to call this Yixing clay, but Yixing is a specific region in, in China. So this is not Yixing clay. This is actually made in Taiwan. Um, but yeah, I like this. I like this color. So the I think the little Iro goes well with this one. So if you want to ever gift me a teapot or a teacup, um, either just white porcelain or ochre clay, listen to this. This is the sound of a very very good tight fit lid and teapot. Let me catch up. What did I miss? Um, so I showed Iro in another angle. I held them up to the into the camera. Adorable is comments we always accept here happily. And I think with that we're ready to make more tea. So let me reinfuse this one. I'm gonna. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit again so we get the whole scenery here. I can do this. Put the pyrope back so they stay in focus. And then this. Hmm. Okay, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> I'll have a zipper quick. Show you the tea again. There you go. Yeah, it has a little bit of those those licorice notes. Mm. I'm a bit. They're very weak for me, but that's because I eat way too much. Probably I eat a lot of eat a lot of licorice. 
as in obsessively and then I don't eat it for three months, so I'll probably be fine. But I also like to drink licorice root as an as an infusion, as a tisane. I love it, it's delicious. And so my palate is really accustomed to the, the taste of intense licorice. So I'm having diff I can I can sense them, but I'm having difficulties really telling it's it's yeah, it's there. Um, not gonna mention any brand names, but I like um, they're not they're no longer called Katzenkinder anymore, are they? I think they changed the name. Are they called Lak uh, Kinder or anyway, mentioning brand names? Yeah, so uh, Katzenkinder are my favorites. They're my favorites. I know there's the other there's the other ones, but. You know that the consistency is just perfect, and even when you put them in the fridge a little, and they get really hard. Um, but yeah, oh, <laughs> okay. I'll probably get them tomorrow, <laughs> and then just the uh, Zalmiak pastillin from the from the from the pharmacy. I also like those. But yeah, what's your take on tea water? Do you filter your water in order to brew tea? Yes. So. I'm not too specific about the water. A lot of my tea friends and frenemies are way, way, way more specific about what water to use. And if you talk to people in different regions, meaning origin countries also, depending on whom you ask, some of them just use fresh spring water, others use filtered water, others use only bottled water. Um, in the past, I used more bottled water, really. So still bottled water of certain brands that I'm not going to mention right now, but one could say with a low amount of calcium and hydrogen. Um, no, wait, that's, that's German. Uh, uh, chemistry and putting it into English. It's uh, hydrogen. Carbonate, forgive me. Uh, no, that's not it. That can't be, it's not the same as in German. I know that. Um, oh no, it's hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so low amount of cal calcium and hydrogen carbonate. That's the two that I usually look at if you buy bottles, bot bottled water. But I kind of stopped that at some point because first off you always have to, and I don't have a car, so it's always like carrying bottles. And um, how sustainable and environmental friendly is it really to buy if the good ones are really the ones that come in plastic bottles and maybe get shipped from France? I sometimes use bottled water for tea tasting events, so not even for tea seminars. Um, I do one tea seminar at a tea store where they don't even have a water filter and the water there is okay. So that works with a good tea as well. But at home, we use a water filter, like a hand filter that um, removes the calcium a little bit and uh, that makes a huge difference. So here in Cologne, there's a lot of um, calc uh, in the water and um, you'd, you'd end up with a tea that is that performs way below its um, potential due to the lime um, in the in the water. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what the the lime is really what you what you want to get out of the water and reduce the the hardness a little bit in order for the aroma really to be able to get out because that gets blocked otherwise. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just joking, friend of me. It's not. <laughs> I, d I d actually I think I'm too insignificant in the in the global tea industry to have have frenemies. But um, it's more a hint at the fact that there are a lot of diverse opinions and not only traditions in terms of China, Taiwan, uh, South Korea, Japan, India, and all around the world where tea comes from, and people have different. By the way, this tea. It's a nice experiment because this has been a very long infusion now. <laughs> um, but I'll 
tell you in a moment why that is not a problem with this specific team. So, yeah, within the, I want to say within the tea community, in my experience, specifically in, in, in the German speaking community, there is so much diversity. Some maybe do, maybe work with tea a bit more freestyle, like I do a lot of times. Some are very, very strict and accurate about everything, even in their personal tea rituals. So whereas I would only use a thermometer or a timer um, when I when I do a comparative tasting or for a maybe for a tasting workshop that I do for a, for a company or for, for, for people who are interested really in, in learning about that. Personally at home, I never use a thermometer or a timer. I have the electric kettle here that has the thermometer so it tells me what temperatures temperature the water has that is really helpful I, i'll give you that but other than that making tea for me is much more about getting a feel for the actual tea in front of me and getting to know it and I, i'm saying that without wanting to sound as a, esoteric at all because that's also not me um but just getting a feel for it and and getting the experience and try and error and and getting it wrong brewing it too hot too cold um too many tea leaves uh, what have you and then i will have learned something as i always say brew your tea the wrong way the wrong way um qu quotation marks you will have learned something but there's also people who do it a very uh, different way and they really use a thermometer and they're very specific about they use um a scale to measure the amount of tea leaves like up to the 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 gram and um so i was i was pointing more towards the fact when you asked me what's your opinion about water f filtered water um you'll get as many opinions um as you will get about how to brew tea properly you know it really it really depends but it depends also um because i, I really i'm not judging people who do it differently than me uh, just to be clear it depends on your personal daily routine your ritual over the years and you'll get used to that and then once you get to a certain point it, it's it's just natural if some, once you get to a certain point and that doesn't mean you're better than anyone else but it just means you've gotten you've gotten used to something to a certain standard of what your tea tastes like and then it will be difficult to to go back or just change to something different right so if you're used to having the accurate times and and temperatures and and um, grammature of the, the teas in as part of your ritual, you will probably have a much more refined sense also for tasting notes. I was talking about that earlier. I'm really bad at that. Also as a consequence of me having a more generalized approach to my personal tea ritual, right? For me, it's more, it's a balance of paying attention to the tea, knowing my stuff, knowing a little bit of my tea science background, but also making it an experience that's relaxing for me. And I don't want to turn it into a science only. For me, it's also like, I don't meditate. I don't do any, um, I don't take care of my mental health um, as much as I should, but tea is that part of my life that contributes to, to balancing me. And so tea is kind of, for me, Kelsey, you said tea is a science. For me, tea is part science, something I can, nerd out about with with other people but it's also for me a retreat and a safe space for me really something that i very much also enjoy just by myself so i love to share my enthusiasm here on camera in tea seminars and workshops and drinking tea with friends in a group of people tea is such an agent an instigator if you will of communication and creativity and collaboration but just as much. I love to just be at home, myself or the two of us here alone, and just share tea and be quiet. Kind of quiet, because as you can tell, I talk a lot. End of monologue. But you know, the one thing we have enough in this world is people fighting over a lot of things and I will no longer surround myself with people in tea 
who get into fights with other people about stuff like that. So if you are very opinionated about how you prepare your tea and how you should do it and how it's right or wrong, I probably won't be willing to share a cup of tea with you. Because also as an educator, if you allow me the, the, the posh word there, as someone whose main mission it is to get people excited about tea in the first place. So my main audience for my tea events is not people who are already at a certain level and they want to do like a, a specialized uh, Japanese gyokuro tea seminar or matcha seminar or tea ceremony. I don't do tea ceremonies, right? I'm not qualified for that and it's not my, it's not my main focus. But getting newbies into tea and excited about tea and opening that window, that door, and then helping them to enabling them to explore from there on their own and find other people who can teach them about tea and then get different opinions and then form their own uh, their own tea um, ritual and their own opinions and their own um, stuff, right? So it's just not helpful if you approach anyone really, whether it's among tea nerds or whether it's tea nerd talking to someone who's new to tea, the more opinionated, the more strong-minded you are, um, I don't think it's helpful. Because it also, and I'm saying that as someone with a very strong ego, whose main life goal is also to get rid of that at some point, I'll tone it down a bit. Um, I think being very opinionated about something that you're passionate about also speaks to the fact that it's something to do with your ego and and are you really passionate about the tea in this case or are you passionate about seeing you as a tea person and over the years i have learned or i'm still learning to tone down my ego a little bit more when i talk about tea and when i present tea and myself in the context of tea and for me it's just I just want this to be about tea and um, that's also then that uh, is something we can connect with my you know I took a pause I paused for a for a few years I went back into my original profession as a, as a brand strategist and communication consultant to level up that level up that part of, of, of my career and now I'm bringing both together but also I'm very aware of how I want to talk about tea, what I want to do in tea, and what I do not do no longer condone in tea. Because a lot of things happen not only in tea, but in general in within the system that we live in, where, and by the system I mean capitalism, um, so where products get put on the market that frankly no one needs. And uh, just with great marketing, you can make get people into buying them. The beauty about tea, not to digress too much here, the beauty about tea for me is that tea does not need any made up stories. Tea is so rich in in um, history, in stories, in, in so much stuff that just needs to be put out there. And you have to help people. We, we as tea educators, we have to help people get excited about that and make that knowledge accessible and, and um, answer those questions. And um, yeah, and then that's almost all the marketing tea needs. So for me, tea doesn't need fancy packaging, doesn't need stylish presentation. That helps if you like. I mean, as you can tell, I'm trying, I'm trying to come to you here with a bit more of a clean uh, presentation compared to especially tea games and star stuff days where we would, fun note, a fun anecdote, where we would um, talk about clay teapots while playing Elite Dangerous and um, jamming with our uh, music friend Dan Chapman. <laughs> so I'm trying to focus, I'm trying to keep it a bit more focused and minimalistic and clean, but for me tea needs to be at the center of it all and not your ego, not your brand that you put on top of it to make it look or sound nice or to be able to say oh I created this tea brand and it's called XYZ. Um, Yes, it helps to sell the product to new target audiences, but the people I have had the privilege to to help 
of helping uh, to to get into the world of tea um, what they were most interested in was asking those basic questions water temperature just like we're discussing a water temperature hey the driver 83 welcome to this um lengthy monologue here <laughs> triggered by a bunch of really cool questions um and i'm going to show a little iro again sorry kelsey um, the basic questions, like the ones we are talking about, filtered water, um, water temperatures, uh, why is black tea black and green tea green? How can it be from the same plant? That's the kind of questions that still so many people, like I want to say the majority of people who already are interested in tea, they do not have answers to that. And they don't get answers to those questions by looking at fancy packaging or by um, listening to someone... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll end this here. <laughs> it's turning into too much of a rant, but on a positive note. So that's my credo. Get people excited by answering questions, putting the tea in the center of it all, and at least, you know, present it, create a nice brand around it, make it beautiful, it, all of that. But don't get distracted by marketing around the, uh, the product when with tea, we have a product that has so much authentic storytelling going on and you just need to take it, learn about it and then put it into words that resonate with your target audience at hand. And yes, I give you that. If that target audience is into design, for example, then you may end up with a tea brand that comes with pretty packaging, for example, you know? So that's there's no shame in that. But um, I think talking about tea in an honest way, focusing on the product, and then also explaining why certain tea costs, teas cost uh, this or that amount of money, um, is also easier when you just focus on the tea and not spend too much money on creating, creating a fancy surrounding. My tea store, if I ever have one again, and then I'll show the teapad again, sorry. <laughs> if I ever get one again, and if you want to help me get a tea store at some point. Um, I have a Ko-Fi link at uh, Thomas Talk, ko fi.com slash Thomas Talks Tea, where we have a tea house fund. So any contributions here, whether you subscribe with your Amazon Prime or you subscribe with your hard-earned cash even, or you throw bits in me, um, or um, tip me over at ko fi.com starting from, I think, five bucks or monthly even, it's all going to go to what I call the Tea House Fund. And um, that is something I will not be able to pull off by myself because I I do not have money, but people, if I did, <laughs> I'd buy us a tea house where we could all sit. Oh, I'm a poet. So um, if you, in the long run, want to help me to try and get closer to that goal of um, creating a very minimalistic, cozy tea house, kind of with the vibes that we're getting here. This is kind of the the um, the um, test scenario for that tea house. Uh, go over to coffee.com slash Thomas Talks Tea and um, it would mean a lot to me if you could help me out with that. Not today necessarily, just in the long run at some point, whenever you can afford. So, how's it going? It's going great. Happy Sunday, Driver83. Welcome to the stream. Um, and I'm glad, Francis, we're on the same page with seemingly a lot of things. So, um, our resident artist, Sir Kelsier, instructs me to, let me get this right. Uh, so, what am I supposed to do? Pose again, maybe from a plain front view. Oh, we just, um, so. What if I put it on here? Okay, focus. So, there's a front view. I can go even closer. I assume you're taking screenshots. Okay, that's the front view. I'll give you the rear view again. Or oh, that's just a kind of a top, top down view, isn't it? That's like a top down view. I think that's a good one to see. So, I never know whether this is, there's a specific name for this. I'm so bad at these things because I'm, I'm really, my, my interest in tea pads is so 
limited, so I never know whether this is it's a frog or a fish or a fig fr fish frog. Either of these two. This is special. It has a it has a name, so you can tell. I'll never do seminars about tea pets. That's not my expertise. A lateral view here. And another lateral view. You have it. Great. And uh, then down, we can see it has two feet and a tail. So it's kind of a, it's a, I think it's more of a fish, a fish with a frog face. You're welcome. Yeah, little arrow is very detailed indeed. Yeah. I mean, that's the part I can appreciate, right? The, the, those details, the carving and the, the clay, that's really cool. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit about why it's not a problem that over the course of my monologue, um, look at this, look at this. It looks like coffee, doesn't it? And I'm not joking, this is really, this is not, this is the real color. It looks the same here for me. This is not the camera. <laughs> it looks like coffee. And um, pour some here. It looks like coffee. The really cool thing about Shupuar is, look at that, it looks like coffee. The really cool thing about Shupo R is that it does not get bitter. So even so, this is the this is really the ideal tea if you want to be lazy and just infuse the tea, go do something else, you're busy, or you just and you, then you go back and then you um, separate the tea leaves from the, the the liquor as we call the infuse a tea in tea tea speak. It's going to be very very strong, so it's very intense and it has a lot of this. It's very intense, a lot of that earthiness, the licorice is much more uh, pronounced now, but it's not bitter. Let me ask someone else here in the room. Is this bitter? Can you tell me if this is bitter for you? I feel like you can put the cup here, so it's like a very cool effect. <laughs> Everything for the content. There you go. And tell me if this is bitter. Or just strong. It's not bitter. Approved by the husband. It's not bitter. But we'll do another one. Um, now shorter again. So uh, let's let's say um, what should we do? 10, uh, 15, 20. Let's do 20 seconds. That's going to be enough for you. And then you can go on and on and on with uh, reinfusing. A lot of teas with our tea you can go 10 times 15 times I'm not lying 20 times even just and again the question how many times can I reinfuse just go on reinfuse as much as you like and at some point you'll notice oh it starts tasting like just water so then you'll probably want to stop or you keep infusing if you like water with a bit of that color still you know so there's no natural end really to it um, or there is a natural end to it at some point, but there's no rule about 18 times, 19 times, 15 times, 40. Just go with the flow. Be water, my friends. And um, yeah, that's how I do it anyways. Right? It's And it's one of the challenging parts probably of doing tea education, specifically in Germany, because people are very curious, very... It's very thankful for um, having their questions answered, but they have a lot of questions that are somehow rooted in that idea of right and wrong and doing things the correct way. And depending on, I'm generalizing again, but depending on who's sitting in front of you, it can be tough to get that idea out of their heads and be like, no, it's not about right and wrong. It's about preparing a cup of tea that works for you. And, um, we can give you like this on the packaging usually have brewing instructions or recommendations um, and you can start with those and then take it from there go a bit left go a bit right try a bit hotter a bit colder you know things like that and then see what that does is does it change the experience do you like it more do you like it less and not doing that in my opinion is really a loss because if tea is one thing for me, it's all about the adventure, the experience, the the experimentation. Yeah. 
if you went to the link tree earlier, I'm going to share it again. If you went to the link tree earlier, we'll see there's a YouTube channel because um, as Kelsey will know, um, there is a YouTube channel that's uh, Major Star Stuff or YouTube at T Games and Star Stuff, where I specifically last year for a while was quite obsessed about <laughs> um, making language videos, specifically about um, a, an alien language from Star Citizen, a game that both Sir Kelsey and I are passionate about. And um, that was kind of the tea games and star stuff, so some tea archive tea stuff from the tea streams here on Twitch from, from three, four years back. There's a lot of stuff still on there, and uh, yes, go check it out. <laughs> um, the early experimental phase. Because we streamed here on Twitch for, I think, two years already, back in 2000, I want to say 2018, 19, 20, like on and off, but quite consistently for a while. And um, no, links, it's not link, links, that's the one. And the YouTube channel is kind of an artifact that reflects my experimenting with content around gaming, around tea, on Twitch, on YouTube. But for the tea now, for the revived and upscaled tea business, I chose to make a new YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash at Thomas Talks Tea. Surprise, surprise. And if you want to support me further, just easy one, go, go there, click subscribe and uh, motivate me to put up stuff there. Don't expect any video content that's dedicated edited YouTube content because um, as I put it uh, yesterday in my message I've never made a secret about it that uh, editing is neither my strong suit nor do I enjoy it so what will happen on the YouTube channel is mostly highlights clips um, and shorts from shorts and or highlights and clips from Twitch and Instagram which is also where which is actually where most of my tea community so far lives, uh, where, where I also live stream at least once a month with my friend Cleo, who's a tea specialist from Brazil. We had our first live stream already this week. Um, go check Instagram if, you, if you're active there and, and watch the video, the reel of that stream. I think that went really well, uh, except for the fact that my microphone couldn't be there for, for technical difficulties. I digress. So new YouTube channel, subscribe. And then I'll start putting up some some shorts next week. It's I won't say it's in my bullet journal already, but it's not. I'll write it <laughs> and, and note it down in my bullet journal after this stream. Apps. And if you uh, are an Amazon Prime customer, you know the usual one. I think we also have a command still for that. Yes, if you're an Amazon Prime customer. Remember that. Once a month, you can support um, any streamer here on Twitch with your Prime sub. And I'm not saying that should be me, but um, if you're not currently using it and if you're having a good time here or just want to support me and motivate me to remain consistent or become consistent here on Twitch again, consider subscribing. Thanks. And again, a very long intrusion. See, we, we need to practice that. <laughs> so in, in a situation like this, Arguably, a timer can be helpful. And there's really, there's cool apps really for tea making. Um, friends of mine launched an app a few years back. I'm not sure if it's still in beta access or if it's like, finished and polished already. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of, of apps around that. I don't use them because I don't track my tea consumption in that way. I track it by this year by drying all my used tea leaves and keeping them. So I have a bag that is full already um, with, with dry tea leaves that I have consumed so far this year. But yeah, maybe you should start using using one of those apps with a, with a timer again so that this happens less. Because for this tea, it's no problem at all. It just gets nice and intense. And the tea lingers even more on the, on the, at the back of the, in the back of the throat, excuse me. But for some other teas, this would potentially be catastrophic. Okay, 
Um, I'm going to bring... I know you all love my beautiful voice. <laughs> I'm just going to take a little tea break myself, just drink a little bit, calm down again, because I also want to make that part of the stream. And that's not an excuse for being lazy and just <laughs> doing nothing. Um, I'm going to take a short tea break and meditation of sorts and um, look up a few things that I still want to share today. And for that, I'll also bring the music up to a higher volume. Stand by. It's not going to be too loud. And I'll talk to you in a moment, I suppose. Well, speaking of which, I'm going to do... I'm going to do a few of these um, next week because it'll be busy and this is basically also my office. So I thought um, while I'm sitting here working, I'll, I did it already this week. And if you're working from home, being creative or whatever you're doing, studying, I'll do a bunch of rather spontaneous study with tea streams. So where I sit here, make tea, share that with you, but also sit here with my uh, laptop and just work. So very much like what's happening right now for the next, say, five minutes. drawing for today, you suppose? Is it, is it proving to be too difficult?
have a um no I used to have a button here on my new toy, the little stream deck. I used to have a button to change the title to Meditation. <laughs> uh, but I'm a bit hesitant still because um I'm not sure if that's something I want to uh, put too much in the like it's not a separate stream format. I think we can I want to have these moments where we just sit and breathe and chill for a few minutes and are just quiet. But um the team meditation, I'm not sure how we how we how we to do that. Would probably be something I would I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I think about it. We'll see. So far we have the Bossa Nova Tea House. Which is by the way the same playlist as to tonight. Uh, the Lo-Fi Tea House, because sometimes I think Lo-Fi music really goes well with tea as well. But Bossa Nova is really the way to go, to be honest. And then we have the study stream, which we'll do a few times next week. Tea Tasting Tuesday on Tuesdays, and our new Sundays at the Tea House, obviously. So you will always want to slurp the tea. I mentioned earlier already that's gonna help your nose to detect the aromatic compounds that are in the tea, which is not something the tongue has anything to do with because all the tongue can do is sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami, that mysterious um, taste uh, that's uh, from the from Japanese language. I'd describe it as a as a taste, a taste that you'll know from a vegetable broth, from a tomato concentrate, from yeah, vegetable broth or even a chicken broth, stuff like that it has a strong umami. And it's something we have very much in Japanese teas, but also in some, some other teas, but especially Japanese teas, sencha, Kabusecha and specifically Gyokuro are very well known for their intense umami. Uh, so much so that Gyokuro, which is a fully shaded tea, so the tea leaves get covered and they take less sunlight during uh, the, the growing of the tea leaves and then they turn less of the catechin, which is... No. Less of the catechin gets turned into... Um, into, uh, sorry, the other way around. Less amino acids get turned into catechin because catechin is what the tea plant produces in order to protect the cell from sunlight. So less sunlight, less catechin gets produced, more amino acids get preserved and those also carry the, the umami taste. But slurping high speed, a lot of air, um, which the nose needs to breathe and to um, back there in your throat retro-olfactorically identify those aromas. It's something you can try at home easily. Try the tea. Um, try any food, really. Maybe something that has an intense taste, something very sweet, something very sour, something very salty. But something that on top of that also is, for example, fruity or flowery, so something that tastes of rose or of like a peach. Peach is a nice one, probably. Um, apricot, banana, something sweet and fruity. And then eat it with just the way you'd eat it. And then block your nose, very much like this, and then eat the fruit without your nose being able to do anything. And you'll note, it's horrible, there's nothing. So all that remains is the sweetness because it's a taste and the taste is something the tongue identifies. But um, the fruitiness, the banana, the peach, the, the apricot will not be there because that's an aroma and aromatic compounds get detected um, and uh, the signal then transported to the brain. First and foremost, um, by the nose, um, identifying them. So this tea is 
it's really it's it's so cool it, it gives me it honestly gives me um i would almost describe want to describe it as anxiety if i block my nose and i drink this tea i know what it's supposed to taste like as in smell like the aroma but it's just gone it's just gone it's like it's like um taking a dive in water and then the moment when you notice okay i'm getting short i'm getting out of breath and i need to go up and 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 uh, catch some air. That kind of feeling, but that translated into more... Not sure if that, I'm making any sense, but wow. It's like, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> I can feel it's there, but I can't sense anything. So really fascinating. And without the nose, tea drinking is much, much less of an experience, I'm afraid. More tea. Let's have more tea. Everybody, thank you for joining here for... Use these fancy buttons. We really need to upgrade this, this camera. Um, welcome to Sundays at the Tea House, your friendly, cozy, virtual tea space here on Twitch, where we reconvene Today for the first time on a Sunday evening actually for a while we used to do these in the past we had a few years back we had our Sunday tea time where everything was still a little bit less focused I want to say so it was the times of tea games and star stuff so I would play computer games talk about tea talk about other stuff and um, I'd sometimes bring out the telescope which is still here with me by the way so right here next to me but I'm not gonna bring the telescope and I hope I deactivated the channel reward for that yeah but now everything's focused here on tea which is also why this channel is called Thomas Talks Tea on Tuesdays if you're really into tea you may want to join us for Tea Tasting Tuesday where every week we try out a new tea well not a new tea for me but we focus on one tea that we taste and we talk about learn about Similar to what we've been doing here today, actually, but that was more by accident, just because whenever we drink tea, someone will join us and they'll ask the right questions. And then, of course, we want to talk about it and then help them learn about the tea. So we're talking a lot about tea today as well, but generally Sundays at the Tea House, today's stream is a bit more casual and just catching up on the week, what's been happening and... Um, drinking tea, talking about tea, listening to some music, taking it slow. I'll even throw in some um, focus minutes every now and then if I still something I need to work on and then invite you to study along, which is probably not what you usually want to do on a Sunday evening. So we have more dedicated streams for that over the course of the week. Study with tea is what you want to look out for. But yeah, if you're curious at least about tea, consider following the channel if you want to support me um, or if you first want to learn more about what I do as a full-time tea educator you go to linktree slash Thomas Talks Tea and from there you can find your way to my website thomastalkstea.com where you can learn about my tea workshops and seminars about my team events that I do for um, well for teams <laughs> so if you have a if you have a team or colleagues that you want to also get excited about tea and share with them that how and that it's possible in the first place and how to integrate the the enjoyment of specialty tea into your everyday working routine um, ping me there and uh, we can we can figure something out I also um, unless you're willing to cover the travel costs <laughs> um, I can also do them outside Germany within Europe or globally really via the virtual the magic of the virtual stuff so it will look a little bit like this and I can join you for a lunch break I have a format that's called tea lunch and learn so um, we can do that via zoom um, Skype teams whatever you use at your company go suggest that to your colleagues or to your boss or to yourself if you're a business owner as a team event as a as a as a session for a few people so I can introduce everybody to how tea is really an agent of 
creativity, inspiration, focus, calm, and a collaboration really. So something that, in my opinion, we all want to drink more also at work, if, depending on what your job is, if the circumstances allow. But in my experience, in a lot of places where people think it's not possible, it actually is. And um, whether it's just that, that five minutes of a tea break is going to give back so much for not only for yourself, but for everybody who works with you. At least that's the case with me and probably a lot of people who in the past worked with me will confirm that Thomas without tea and Thomas on tea <laughs> are two very different people to work with. So welcome again to, to the stream here. If you've got any questions, if you have any music requests, if you want me to change the elevator bossa nova to um, something more lo-fi, um, let me know. But um, Otherwise, I'll stick with this one right now because this is kind of the theme of this week. And uh, yeah, I'll shut up for a little bit and bring the music back. Talk to you in a little, little while. And we're going to reinfuse this tea. And this time I'm going to make sure it's only 15 to 20 seconds because I want another light brew.
that's the tea of the day then. It took a moment, sorry, but I'm gonna read this one out for everyone. Today's tea is a mini Bing Cha. Bing Cha. <laughs> Trying to get the tones right there in Chinese. Bing Cha. Uh, which translates as tea cake, or literally in um, English, so it's a mini tea cake. A Shu Cha, so a literally cooked tea, meaning that is um, a post-fermented tea. So as opposed to the Shang Pua that we talked about earlier, which is raw, no, Shang Cha, <laughs> so um, raw Pu'er. Um, the Shu Cha is a ripe Pu'er that has been post-fermented. So it's has that ripe character really much more. I pinned that so now you know there's an additional space there, but it's fine. Typos. Yeah. And I had to save that because I have to start um, saving these in a document whenever I write them. Because that's a tendency that I have. I come up with stuff and then I don't write it down. And then it's gone. So I wrote it down. Nice. Now let's make more tea. Um, 100 degrees centigrade again. Ah, this is relaxing. I hope it's a little bit relaxing for you as well. Let me know over on Discord. What do you prefer? Do you prefer me talking? Do you prefer me shutting the tea up and just putting the music, the volume a bit higher and making tea so you can just mm -hmm. lurk and listen to the music and maybe check out the tea every now and then. Let me know. Got any suggestions or feedback of what you enjoy more. And um, I'll consider that for the future. And again, thank you everybody who's there just lurking. I, your support means the tea world to me. Thank you so much. We can we can also do a little bit of ASMR here, but with the jar here closer to the microphone. Let me try. So I'm gonna just rinse out this teacup. Mmm. Nice hot water to clean the teacup. The teacup. Oh, the plosives there, because I'm not using a pop filter. T-S-A-S-M-R, that would be something. But visual ASMR is also something already. So there we go. More chupoir. And Usually, for any other tea, really, I would, at least not live on camera, <laughs> behind the scenes, that may be a different beast, but um, a different meta. I'm going to just do a, another half a guy one because my, uh, I've got more water here. I come prepared. Just going to do a quick second one and just create a bit more. So usually. I want to go infusion after infusion after infusion and not mix them. But with some teas really that... Some teas develop more and change more over the course of the several infusions from the first to the second to the third and so on and so forth. So you really have a more fragrant first couple of infusions and then they are more balanced, they get deeper and then they suddenly get watered down. But for some teas that's also very consistent and I feel like Shupuar is one of the teas where for a lot of them there's there's like between second and and say sixth, fifth and sixth, seventh infusion, there's a lot of consistency. So I feel like you can if you, for example, want to brew tea for a for more people and instead of using a larger teapot, you just do two brews right after it right after another and then just pour them both in the serving pot there you go you made twice the amount of tea but yeah it's something i really only ever do with 
Chupu R. I'm not sure even about Shangpu R. Server 70 here. So the idea is that this one here in the tea camera view is basically always your you all's cup of tea. I wish I could hand it to you and then you can really take it. Okay, and then there's our friend Sir Calcium. Um, it's messaging me on Discord. Nice. Um, let me know if I can share this on the stream or if we want to keep it on the Discord. If you're curious, join us on Discord. Um, maybe we should just keep it to Discord for now <laughs> because that will encourage everybody to join us on Discord. Join us on Discord um, where. I'm actually going to, Kelsey, I'm going to give you the additional role now as a resident artist. And you've proven yourself as a certified team nerd also, I suppose. There you go. Very nice, I love it. A small little practice. <laughs> That's something I could never do. It's really beautiful. Gonna drink some tea now. I approve of that. I approve of that. I'm going to drink some tea now as well. I'll just hand this across the room. Or use the cup. Let me use the strainer here. Because there's a few tea leaves or broken stuff in there. Oh, let me finish this. And then we need more water. Luckily, I brought more water. Originally, I wanted to start the stream. I'd meant to start the stream at 7 my time. But then I hadn't eaten anything. And I was like, nah. Actually, let's start at 8. And seeing that now I was only able to really join, or more people are able to join, I think that was a good, a good choice. OK, we've got endless amounts of water now. No stopping us today. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorite tunes, by the way. That's that record over here. Let's enjoy that one. Um, tea break. I should put on a timer like, okay, tea break. Let's, let's take five minutes for tea and music. And um, everybody, please share and chat what, you're, what tea you're having, if you're having tea. And if it's something else, don't be shy. Uh, we don't discriminate here. Coffee lovers and. Um, Drinkers of all sorts of beverages are welcome here. I'll bring back the music a bit and then let's enjoy a little tea time.
hope everyone's enjoying the tea. Please feel free to share what you're having. If you're on the Discord server, post your impressions on the photo spamming channel or just on Thomas Talks Tea. Unless uh, our moderator Noko is, is there to uh, scold you, <laughs> you can just spam it where we like. Really. I'm going to um, put up a sub goal and or the uh, coffee stream. for the follow um, I guess this is not a follow we want here 
to be honest. Uh, no moderators in the house right now, so I'll do the honor myself. <laughs> um, everybody, keep going. Keep enjoying the tea. There's, there's nothing happening here. Just do some banning real quick. <laughs>
Okay, um... If, if it weren't you, Kelsey, who asked the question, but a random new chatter, I would suspect spam. <laughs> I'm going to give you the benefit of a doubt here and take this um, to everybody. So, Kelsey's question to everyone. What exactly is your favorite species of deer? Am I getting that right? Um... What are the various species of deer that we could choose from? <laughs> it's not really something I ever considered, to be honest. Uh, so what does it have to do with tea? <laughs> but, sure, whatever you're passionate about. Um, but please feel free to elaborate on that question. while we're making more tea here. <laughs> also again, that uh, piece of art that uh, Kelsey has shared over on the Discord, it's its something you want to see, it's really cool. Um, I certainly know as soon as I have the budget to ask for someone to improve our overlays and personalize it a little bit with, with channel art, um, I know whom to ask uh, to help me with that. If that's even something you want to do. <laughs> Obsessed with deer. That's that's new. I. What are different deer in German even? I have no idea. Educate me. Okay, I'm going to Wikipedia right now. So this tea chat just turned into a deer nerd chat. Okay, so, um, English. Du -du -du -du. So, species of deer. A deer, or true deer, is a hoofed ruminant ungulate of the family Cervidae. It is divided into subfamilies, yada 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 yada. Terminology, distribution. White-tailed deer, mule deer, black-tailed deer, elk, red deer. Um, let me see. You know what? Since I never gave it any thought, I think I'll just stick with sheep because that I can. That is something I could answer specifically. Because, um, while I'm not obsessed with sheep, per se, I grew up, and there is a photo of me um, from my childhood that I'll at some point share, probably not here, but on Discord. I think I shared it in the past. And um, my favorite species of sheep is the Heidschnucke. Uh, the Heidschnucke is, um, and I'm reading Wikipedia here to you, um, because I can't do this from the top of my head. The Heidschnucke is a group of three types of moorland sheep from northern Germany. Like a number of other types from Scandinavia and Great Britain, they are northern European short-tailed sheep. The three breeds of Heidschnucke in order of population size are German Grey Heath, the Graue Gehörnte Heidschnucke, the White Polled, and the White Horned one. 
And now I'm wondering, I think the white haunt is the, the one that I grew up with. The, um, or I grew up uh, next to. <laughs> the main breeding areas in Northern Germany, yeah, so, and the Lüneburg, the Lüneburger Heide is um, the one where it's, uh, that's most famous for these. So, and fun fact, I grew up nowhere near that area, but where I grew up, our neighbors had um, a bunch of those. And one spring, was it? Early summer? the uh, A lot of them ate some kind of plant that they weren't supposed to eat, and uh, a lot of them died, including all the mother sheep that had just... Um, given birth to the baby sheep and so I kind of adopted first one his name was Felix and then another two I forgot their names so I ended up adopting three little black little lambs Heitschnucker lambs and bottle fed them each day before I went to school that was I was I must have been I don't know somewhere between the age of eight and ten or something I think so and um yeah, that's a fond memory from my childhood. So Heitschnuck <laughs> is my favorite um, kind of sheep. That's that's what I can tell you. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> sure, it's 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 perfect. <laughs> I mean, I do not have a problem with. Uh, I, I consider the stream alive even when we are just listening to music and looking at the tea because that's basically value. Uh, in itself for me, but um, feel always feel free to to uh, throw in whatever you're passionate about or whatever you want to talk about. Don't hold back. So, um, but since we're learning here, as a choice, there is Rothirsch, Damhirsch, Philippinenhirsch, Davids. <laughs> I don't know those. <laughs> um, Vapiti, I've heard of Schweinshirsch, but not all live here in Germany. Okay, <laughs> I'll probably. Um... I want to say I'll have to read up on those. I'll probably not do that, but I'll um, probably have to watch a documentary. So if you recommend one, feel free to share. Um, I used to watch um, nature documentaries a lot as a child. Like probably a lot of um, here in Germany, we had Heinz Zielmann, who was a famous um, uh, producer of uh, TV documentaries about animals. Oh, uh, yeah. Good memories. Let's make more tea. The deer. Yeah, interesting. I mean, that to me, to be honest, I was like, where did that come from? But then again, you know, if you had asked me about my favorite kind of sheep, I would have immediately been able to tell you Heitschnucker, obviously. <laughs> the only valid one. But what's yours? There's also Maultierhirsch, Weißwedelhirsch, Schwarzwedelhirsch, Elch. Well, Elk. I, I think Elk is a cool one. But I have to check out. I don't want to do injustice to the other one, so I want to learn all about deer now. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but uh, what's your favorite one? Do you have a favorite, or is it similar to tea, where a lot of people, me included, do not even have a favorite tea? But it depends on you know. Maybe some are nice because they're so agile and fast. Some are so elegant and um, majestic. I don't know. What is it that, that fascinates you about them in the first place? I mean, it's animals, it's nature, so of course it's fascinating, but why deer specifically? Is it be do they, I'm just guessing here, is it because each of the, the species uh, has a different kind of way of moving, a uh, different way of, a different appearance, as I said, more elegant, uh, agile, stuff like that? Interesting. You never watched a documentary? Tree about deer, but you've read parts of the Wikipedia article multiplayer. Okay, Wikipedia is always a good source to start things out. Oh, elk in Germany is for okay. Um oh, yeah, elk, yeah, sure, yeah. Elk would be moose, yeah. Oh, that's confusing. If a pity would be elk. There you go. Nice. Sundays at the tea house, my friends. So, Sir Kelsey just set the tone for the coming weeks. 
um, of what to is expect. Well, I'll be a bit more strict on tea tasting Tuesdays because also I need to discipline myself and um, so I don't forget that um, we have some days where we really only want to talk, not only, but I want to give you all that tea nerd stuff. But this is exactly so. Thank you for that. This is exactly what I would like to have um, as well. For example, here on Sundays, just think if you were to go to a tea house or maybe what most people are more familiar with, if you were to go to a pub or to a cafe or to a club on a on a Sunday afternoon, on a Sunday to a club on a Sunday afternoon, well, um, to a cafe or to a pub on a Sunday afternoon or evening and... Um, the, the people you'd meet there, the people you'd hang out with, talk to, new people, collect new ideas, exchange stuff. So that's totally something that um, I want to have a space here for our Sundays at the Tea House. Because here at the Tea House we have all sorts of people with different experience, different backgrounds and, and different passions, different um, professions. And I want all that in here. So. Thank you again for bringing the deer question. <laughs> I'm a big fan of mule deer and I just wanted to annoy some friends and read the Wikipedia article about them and actually liked it. <laughs> nice. The mule deer. I'm not going to bring up the Wikipedia article now, but um, you got me curious there. Mule deer. Everybody, um, it's half past 10. We're getting ready slowly but um, surely to move over to the Tangerine Club, our friends. Let me check. I think they're still... Let me check real quick. Things are still going strong. So what we're going to do is we'll um, shortly head over to the Tangerine Club here on Twitch. As you can tell from the About section in the stream description, we are part of Team... Uh, not Team. Um, we are part of Team Vamo here on Twitch, which is a team of, and I quote, uh, friends and family of amazing streamers from Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Japan, Australia, Greece, Portugal, yada yada, yada and so on and so forth. And they are mostly musicians, talented artists really from all over the globe. And somehow they ended up inviting me to join them. Um, we've got Chris Ortega, my dear friend with Bossa Nova Cafe. I'm going to take you one day there. Um, Dan Chapman, our resident um, musician here in, in chat, is also part of Team Bamo. And the founders, one of the founding or the, the, the founders really of Team Bamo are the Tangerine Club, who are an amazing duo of musicians from Brazil, currently residing in Argentina, but they're actually moving back to Brazil next month, I think. And um, I want to take you there. We're only a few people, but since we are enjoying tea and music here, I thought, I always think tea and music is so great together. Tea and art in general, or other arts. Um, so I'm going to take you to uh, over to the Tangerine Club in a, in, a, in a few moments as we're getting ready to end, end the stream for today. But I already want to say thank you, and I don't want to say that, keep that till the last minute. I already want to say thank you for joining me today. For those, to those who were here earlier, to those who've been lurking, I did not check, but I saw the number of viewers going quite high towards the middle of the stream thank you so much it's always appreciated and specifically now with thomas talks tea i appreciate you all whether you're actively contributing taking part in chat and um throwing in questions and and <laughs> um we end up talking about sheep and deer and stuff like that it all i want this all to have a place here at the thomas talks tea um, all the, the conversations about what we're passionate about, what we do, um, how we see life and then what gets us through the day. And if you just, just, if you're here lurking and just listening in to my wonderful voice, as someone put it earlier, thanks again, Francis. Um, by the way, check out um, T 
tea time with Francis. I hope I'm getting this right. Yes, check out Tea Time with Francis, uh, another tea lover here on Twitch. Um, mostly playing games, I think, but always with a cup of tea. <laughs> so, um, thanks again for for the what you said about my voice, Francis. And if you're just here to listen to the music and observe and and learn, and you don't feel like chatting so much, that's totally fine, and it's. It helps me a lot, um, especially to keep the motivation going to show up here frequently, consistently, because that's the one thing. Um, my focus this year and beyond is on tea, and uh, Kelsey, I'm sorry, I'm not going to put out any more Banu language videos, <laughs> because it just takes away so much time and energy that I need this year really for tea to rebuild my business. Um, focus is on tea, but my main challenge will be being consistent especially also i want to be consistent here on twitch with showing up uh, reviving the discord server a bit more but most importantly here on twitch on instagram where, where the, the other half of my tea community lives like the professional network um feel free, to, feel free to follow me also there for the monthly live streams with my friend cleo and yeah so anything helps you're contributing just by being here, by engaging in chat, whether you're subscribed or following or whatever you're doing. Um, if you know of any tea stores where you live that you always thought, well, they have a nice space, there's enough space for a group of people, be it six to four people, six people, six to ten people is optim optimal, really. And you want to suggest them to maybe host tea seminars themselves and they're not sure about how to do that get them in touch with me via my my website or my contacts and um, we can figure something out I'd love to um, conduct more tea seminars in collaboration because that's how I mostly do it these days in collabor collaboration with other uh, tea stores and tea brands so all across Germany all across Europe easy if it's somewhere else on another continent might be a bit tricky tricky and uh, we'll have to figure something out but um, if you have any ideas nearby to where you live where you want thomas talks tea to be physically present for a day or two um think of me that's uh super helpful as well and as always feedback is always appreciated over on discord um just um throw it into the thomas talks tea channel and if you're a gamer and you're still here from when we had a bit more gaming stuff going on, we are going to start um, a bit of gaming stuff behind the scenes. So on, on the Discord server, I'm in talks with a bunch of you gamers um, who are members of the Discord that we maybe start doing gaming streamers, gaming sessions on, on Discord, and then everybody can just join in. But uh, we'll, we'll see when and if that, that can happen. Uh, most likely it's going to start with Star Citizen and Dan and myself sharing our Star Citizen sessions there. But yeah, more updates about that in the future. Um, yes, so there is a new YouTube channel. Let me bring up the links again. So this is the link tree and there is a should be a link to the new YouTube channel. It's just uh, youtube.com slash at Thomas Talks T. Again, fair warning. I'm not going to for the time being I won't have time to produce dedicated YouTube content and it's also it's the least relevant for my mission to be honest so what I'm what I'm excited about is to share and spread the passion for loose leaf tea specialty tea mostly in live settings and that's physical spaces as well as the virtual space which makes twitch the ideal space for us to exist as a as a tea tea speed tea space right in the virtual realm um so youtube will mostly be will mostly be uh clips and highlights from twitch and instagram lives um and uh yeah clips and highlights from instagram and twitch most of the time for the time being never know what will be in a year from now but please don't expect any any lengthy tea videos for the time being that may always always change but right now i focused on rebooting my tea business from the first of may so there's a lot of work that i need to do for that um talking to potential customers and clients and uh, collaboration partners yada yada, yada. and then 
coming back here to Twitch and being consistent also on Instagram. That's really going to be my focus for now. But for the German speaking ones among you, there is a link, the, the playlist to the Dinge und Tee, my former podcast uh, with I think eight episodes or six episodes that I did like years back. I started one of my experiments. Um, maybe you want to listen to that one um, in German. And I also have a playlist there that's called Thomas Talking Elsewhere, where you can um, find like uh, there's uh, an interview or two with me that other people did, tea people did, or like a journalist did a few years back. There's the Tea Talk series of six episodes that I did for the um, company that made the automated tea machine. They're quite funny to watch, actually. <laughs> and some of them are really good. Uh, there's one about tea and honey, one about a water since we talked about water today together with the water sommelier that was really cool coffee and tea so you'd have to be able to understand german for those um yeah but that should be on the on the link tree <laughs> you like tea almost as much as banu <laughs> i mean the good thing is um just to talk star citizen and then banu for a moment um I put it on, on my uh, YouTube yesterday. I, I think the, the UEE Linguistics, you know, Linguistic Service, just a great source. And I see you, I I follow you people there um, doing your, your language studies together. So I have no doubt uh, everybody will be fine without my contribution for the time being. And um, speaking of, I'm not going to go into Star Citizen too much right now, but Kelsia, the tea stuff is something that I also want to bring at some point into my Star Citizen experience. Probably not right now because there's no tea stuff really going on, right? But um, in the future when there's more things to do, um, at the latest when I get my Banu Merchantman, it's going to be a dedicated tea hauler and a tea tea space and a tea house. That's my vision for my, my space gaming career. But I digress. People. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. We're going to stop a bit earlier today. It's, it's uh, strictly speaking, we set till 11 o'clock, but um, if it's all right by you, we're going to go for a raid now. Um, we've got a raid command, so that's how it, this is how it works. Um, this is the relaxing vibes incoming. The tea lovers have arrived. Please copy that if you are already a subscriber. And I know some of you um, have been so kind as to subscribe. You can use the sub raid command, which is uh, not ah, that's right, there you go yeah, which is this one, but it's only going to work if you are subscribed and have access to the emotes, I'm going to use the regular one myself, so that was this one, please copy that and we're going to go on a raid to my dear friends, I can only invite you, stay and you're in for a treat one of the best, if not the best music channel here on Twitch they are amazing Come along as we raid and bring a lot of tea love. And they're going to appreciate that. I know it already. <laughs> to my friends of the Tangerine Club. There we go. It has a follower or subscriber only chat. So immediately as we drop in for the raid, please um, leave them a follow. And um, again, copy the raid command. If you want to do me a favor, copy and paste that. And yeah, that's where we're going. Thank you for today. I'll see you over on Discord. I'll see you on Tuesday for Tea Tasting Tuesday or join me tomorrow over the course of the day where I may randomly pop up. Make sure you activate the notifications. I may randomly pop up for a study with Tea Stream where just music of our choice, lo-fi, bossa nova, whatever we, we choose. And I'll be sitting here with my notebook, my laptop and just working and then we can study and learn and work together. Um, so that will happen tomorrow at some point. We'll pop up on Twitch and on Discord. Otherwise, see you on Tuesday evening for Tea Tasting Tuesday or next week here for Sundays at the Tea House. I'm loving it already. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate all your support and the motivational vibes. And now let's go and enjoy ourselves at the Tendering Club. Thank you so much. Let's raid. <laughs>